I've been coaching Jay, who for the first time in his career has had to manage his entire team remotely. The last time we spoke, I asked him to think of the problems of remote leadership in terms of Herman's whole brain model. What are the vital aspects of leadership that we need to focus on? How do we continue to lead effectively, even though our teams are not physically together? Jay had now been leading his team remotely for a number of weeks, and while they had settled into a routine of sorts, he felt there was much they could learn from their current situation. He was keen that the team didn't just tread water, but actually grew to become more agile in their response to any new or unexpected scenario. We discussed how he could use yellow thinking to help. Yellow thinking tends to be more future oriented and strategic in nature, focusing on the big picture rather than on details. And many with a high yellow score are naturally curious and comfortable with risk and ambiguity, and they'll often provide novel solutions to problems. Jay started thinking about how to improve how the team operated on a day-to-day -day basis. It had become clear that some of the team were less tech-savvy than the rest, so we enlisted the help of Michael and Felicity to design a training session to bring the whole team up to speed with all the technology that would make their work much easier. This was a new experience for both of them, as despite being tech wizards, they had never designed or run a training session like this before. It was a real stretch challenge, and one that Felicity especially enjoyed. I really thought hard about what specifically each technology could do for the team, and what was the best way of illustrating that to them. I didn't really expect to enjoy this project, but I found I really loved it. I really felt I was playing to my strengths. This last comment got Jay thinking, and for their next team meeting he asked each team member to outline what have you had to do differently because of working remotely? What have you learned from the experience? And what else do you think the team could improve on? He encouraged them to talk about any initial fear or discomfort that they had felt in adapting to new practices and reassured them that any change, particularly one which is as abrupt as what they had just gone through, brings with it a variety of emotions. Not everyone will feel the same level of comfort or stress. Some will thrive and others will need more help to adapt to change. The team spoke about all the things they'd learned in adapting to these new ways of working and what they felt they still had to learn. Jay acknowledged that all of them, himself included, had to continually build their resistance to accept any failures during this learning process. What was important was to capture the lessons learned from them so that they could be applied in future. When he asked the team to focus on what had actually improved, he was impressed at how curious his team had been in looking for different ways of approaching familiar problems. They had maintained focus on what they had to deliver, but they'd come up with some very innovative solutions to the problems of remote collaboration. If anything, they said, they communicated more with each other than now than they had done when they worked in the same office. There were a lot more milestone checks, and yes, the pace of work was undoubtedly slower, but what they produced was more collaborative and considered. Jay admitted that the biggest learning for him was in providing the team with more context about what they were doing. He explained to them why he was asking more questions about what they were doing and why. To me, a lack of questions when we're working remotely is a danger sign, he said. You should always ask questions of your colleagues and of me. You need to be absolutely clear, not just about what you're doing, but why you're doing it. My biggest mistake early on was to assume that you all knew the why of what you were doing. Just because I take something for granted doesn't mean that you do too. Now when I make a decision, I'll try to share with you my reasoning behind it, to help you all understand why I did what I did. If you don't understand that, please ask. This entire remote management process had shown Jay quite how important each style of thinking was. It really didn't matter what his own personal thinking preferences were, there was a time and a place for each style. If he lacked a particular preference, he could always consult with someone in the team who had that style in abundance to help him fill in any gaps. This way, Jay managed to harness the whole brain power of his team, focusing on goals while not forgetting the human aspects of teamwork, devising creative solutions to problems and being able to implement them. That's the beauty of a diverse whole brain team.